As such, uh, iron deficiency is a common problem in India. In patients with heart failure, iron deficiency is very common. In one of the studies, it was found to be as common as about 70 to 75 percent of heart failure patients. So clearly, we need to look for iron deficiency in every patient with heart failure. I feel that in every patient we should check for hemoglobin, ferritin and TSAT. The reason is that many patients with iron deficiency in heart failure do not have low hemoglobins. So a normal hemoglobin does not mean that the patient does not have iron deficiency. By criteria from ESC and ACC, a ferritin less than 100 along with a TSAT less of less than 20% is an indication for iron deficiency and to supplement with iron. So again to mention, hemoglobin alone is not enough criteria, measure ferritin and TSAT in all patients with heart failure. In heart failure patients, it's always mandatory to give intravenous iron. There are a number of reasons why oral iron does not work, so therefore in all patients with heart failure, I recommend intravenous iron and not oral iron. In all patients with heart failure, we always recommend uh, intravenous carboxymaltose for the simple reason that it is very effective and it is safe. In most patients, one gram of carboxymaltose will be sufficient. And earlier we used to give uh, 500 milligrams and then call the patient back after a couple of weeks and then give them another 500 milligrams. We have stopped that now. We give one gram at the same time. It is safe to give. It is much easier for the patient than to come back again. One gram is usually adequate for patients who are around 60 to 70 kilos and whose hemoglobin is around between 8 to 10. There is a complex uh, formula by which you can actually calculate the exact dose, but I think one gram in most of the Indian patients would be sufficient. What we then do is that we call the patient back again after six to eight weeks and we recheck the ferritin and TSAT values. Some patients do require another 500 milligrams. Many patients do not require. The next dose of one gram may be required after about nine to 12 months. Yes, we have plenty of patients in whom uh, we have heart failure with iron deficiency. In fact, a large number of our patients with heart failure, when we check ferritin and TSAT, they are iron deficient. What we tend to do is to uh, send them immediately down to our casualty department, uh, where they are very uh, used to giving intravenous carboxymaltose, and the patient receives the one gram before he actually goes home, he or she goes home. So we have patients, and I can re clearly remember at least half a dozen patients in the last few months in whom we've given one gram. Most of these patients, when they come back for follow-up visits, they feel very much better. As you know, many patients with heart failure are tired, fatigued, they are breathless, and though we increase and maximize their other medicines, correction of iron deficiency produces a significant benefit for these patients. There are a couple of trials, the confirmed heart failure trial, uh, which clearly show that increasing their serum iron produces a reduction of hospitalization, though we do not have survival benefits yet. We have presented a meta-analysis of two trials in the Indian Heart Journal and there's a recent four meta-analysis of four tests, four studies which have been done and Dr. Anker has presented them in the European Heart Journal. So there's a lot of data and one can look this up uh, and get a very good idea as to the importance of the use of carboxymaltose in patients with iron deficiency and heart failure.